Hi. Good morning. I'm Sandra Pan. I am the chair of the 1990 Institute. Good morning. Welcome. Um, I'm very pleased that you are all here. Um, today, we're going to talk about the social kaleidoscope of China. As in the kaleidoscope, there's so many facets of China that we like to present. Like successful Hollywood blockbusters, maybe we'll make it into a trilogy. We're very excited about today for several reasons. One, a third of today's attendants have been here during prior workshops. So you see a little star on your tag with a number that shows how how many times you've been here before. Two-thirds of you have never been here before. We also now have seven states presented here. So I hope next time you bring more of your peers and we'll cover more states. I'm deeply grateful for you all being here today. I know my children have benefited from a great education inspired by wonderful teachers that took interest to help them develop a deeper understanding of the world and interconnectivities of different cultures. We know that all of you are key to opening your children's minds and giving them the confidence to explore. So why is teaching China important? Why does it matter? I hope to hear from many of you views on that subject. Isn't that why you're all here today? You know, 1.4 billion people under one border, one government, can truly move the needle. As we used to say in the finance business, if China sneezes, the world will have a cold. China's impact is not just in the economic side. China affects our food chain, our environment, and affects the balance of the world in which we live affects human connections and collaborations. We look forward to seeing what you'll take back to your classroom and how you will alter your students' global outlook. So thank you for being here. Good morning, I'm Monica Lee, the 1990 Institute's Executive Director. And Teachers Workshop, as you, many of you know, the 1990 Institute's, it's our signature initiative to include more modern China content in US curriculums. Having joined the Institute in late 2014, I'm really proud to see how our Teachers Workshop have evolved over the past five years. The quality of our speakers have improved significantly, our breakout sessions are dynamite, and our impact keeps growing. More hours on modern China are indeed being taught, and you'll hear some of those examples uh, about that in my fireside chat later this afternoon. Oops. So as many of you know, um, whoa. education conferences like this are a labor of love. You know, this is an annual eight month plus exercise, and our team has undergone superhuman heats, superhuman feats, and a lot of wrangling and very little sleep. So on behalf of our team, I want to thank our um, major supporters. Oh, looks like my slides are out of, uh, out of order. Uh, JT Tai Foundation, Margaret Lou Collins, uh, other board members like Doug Ho and Ruben Wong, and their respective foundations. They all really make this workshop um, possible every year, so thank you so much. Some of them are actually uh, participating in this conference remotely, which we're testing for future live streaming and uh, online webinar expansion. So I also wanna thank the San Mateo County Office of Education and San Francisco State who made our venue and CEU uh, credits possible. I am also uh, extremely grateful for all the hard work done this year by our fantastic workshop team, spearheaded by our 1990 uh, Institute board members, the fearless Lucille Lee and Paul Chang, who've been at, uh, at this whole production effort since the very beginning in 2013. I also wanna especially thank our chair, Sandra Pan, who you just heard from, staffer Marissa Wong, 
um, intern Irene Wong, sorry, Irene Han, and many of our volunteers and board members, um, and especially our dedicated teacher advisory group, Greg, Sushu, Ken, Lisa, and Pat, they're all around here this morning, and all their dedicated long hours. Thank you all for taking this, new year, uh, this year's workshop to the next level. And uh, how about a big hand for our incredible team? So every year, we definitely try to share new curriculum resources on modern China. And what makes this year very special is that uh, we have the dynamic Kaiser Guo, the long-haired gentleman there on the left side of the room, um, the co-founder of Seneca Podcast, Seneca Podcast, on hand to do a live Seneca Podcast taping this afternoon on U.S.-China relations in the age of Trump. You'll see them with the big radio mics, and it'll be really fun because you guys are going to be part of that live taping. Um, and we have two fantastic panelists on that uh, on that podcast, uh, Dr. Susan Shirk and Professor Stanley Rosen, who's a new addition to our lineup today from USC. Um, unfortunately, I'm sorry to share that um, Jeremy's, sorry, Kaiser Guo's South African co-host, Jeremy Goldcorn, can't uh, make it today. He had to cancel due to strep throat. So we didn't want to get any of you contagious. Um, so how many of you, I'd love to see a show of hands, how many of you have listened to one of Kaiser's or Seneca's podcasts? Raise your hands high. Okay, fantastic. Um, and how many of you had used, have used Seneca podcasts in your classroom as a teaching tool? Ooh, there's an opportunity, Kaiser. <laughs> and so how many of you actually checked out Kaiser's panel that he did? He recorded our um, gala symposium on Trump and Xi Jinping, What Lies Head, back in March. Did any of you check that out on our website? OK, great. A few hands. So FYI. Uh, this afternoon's podcast is a follow-up to that March gala, so that's an additional resource for you all to check out. Kind of that was obviously early in Trump's, um, what, 100 days plus? <laughs> so if you haven't been over to subchina.com, I encourage you to check out the 350 plus podcasts that Jeremy and Kaiser have done since 2010, since their days in Beijing. Um, over several hundred thousand people listen to their podcast every month, and their global audience um, is primarily uh, those in the U.S. and China, but also Hong Kong, U.K., and Australia. You'll find that many of their podcasts supplement many of this year's workshop pro uh, topics as well as our prior ones. So, again, it's a fantastic resource that you should check out, and I think um, you and your students may be intrigued by this recent podcast on North Korea and China. They might be interested in some of the topics on Catholicism in China, uh, what it takes nowadays to be a really good, in, uh, plugged in China watcher. Um, you heard about that recent student that got jailed in China, and also there's another one, that, uh, another American who got jailed prior, uh, and that's a fascinating profile uh, to check out. And also, if, uh, on the more fun side, there are uh, things on hip hop. Um, Actually, this is a feature on a hip-hop artist who's really a China economist by day. So I highly suggest that you uh, consider downloading their app or checking out the site on subchina.com. And then also the parent company, uh, SubChina, short for What's Up China, um, also covers a feast of topics on China with their regular newsletter. So SubChina distills 150 information sources down to a daily two-minute read. So if you spend time on your phone, it's a great way for you and your students to really stay up to speed on China. So that's, <laughs> that's my end of my big promo plug for Seneca Podcast. And thank you, a big thank you to Kaiser for um, including the Institute again in your Seneca airtime. So in closing, and many of you may recognize this new um, effort to save China from their air pollution problem. Um, I just really want to thank our speakers and teachers for coming out to San Mateo this year. Um, we hope in the course of the next two days, not only will um, each teacher, sorry, each speaker reinforce why teaching about modern China matters, but also, oops, we hope that. Um, our event will spark some ideas that you can share with us on how to make including modern China curriculum um, 
in, including modern China content in curriculums, a bigger priority. I hope that you can give us ideas on how to make this a true national movement, much like Mandarin immersion learning and coding in our classrooms. So with that, I'm done with my portion. And I'm now going to bring up Paul Cheng, our 1990 Institute board member, who's the, one of our biggest advisors on our workshop curriculum. Many of you know him, as I always like to say, he's the infamous principal of Lowell High School from what, the 70s? <laughs> All right. Big hand for Paul, please. In that case, I should be around 80 years old. <clears throat> I have a few former students uh, who think I am about 80 <laughs> at this time. I'm really happy to be back. And I, I think it's important for me, uh, on a very personal level, to reinforce what, uh, what Sandra and uh, what uh, Monica uh, have stated to you. Uh, for me, the agenda is very simple and very transparent. You know, we hope you will become advocates who really make the teaching of modern China and U.S. relations a top priority in your classrooms and uh, in your school communities. We hope this will be done in a very sensitive, sensible and balanced manner. There's a lot at stake here because you don't want your students to become what I was uh, many years ago. In the mid, I'm gonna say this out loud because it's okay. In the mid 1960s when I was a high school student at White Plains High School, um, I was a fanatical teenage China basher. You won't believe that looking at me now I believe the Vietnam War was uh, China's proxy war against America. I subscribe to the domino theory. Some of you may remember that, uh, which said that if Vietnam fell to the communists, then all the other Southeast Asian nations, nations Cambodia, uh, Thailand, Laos, um, would, would fall under China's domination. Since I was convinced that can't happen, I wrote a paper titled the Annihilation of Chinese Communism, Now or Never. And I tried to get the school newspaper to publish it. It never happened. My views were largely influenced by my father, who fought in the Second Sino-Japanese War. And um, he, he, he was a fervent anti-communist. True, I mean, truly anti-communist. He was always raging against Mao Zedong, he was always talking about Chiang Kai-shek and how we had to go back to the mainland, you know, liberate the mainland. You may have remembered that kind of language, to liberate the, uh, the mainland. Unfortunately, and it's uh, something I have to say with all due respect to my father's uh, opinion, I had no high school teachers who acted as a counterweight to my father's influence. That's really bad. That's really bad. And um, because I, I, really sh I really wish my teachers had exposed me to other perspectives so, so that I wouldn't be so narrow and limited and extreme uh, in my worldview as a young man. That's why the purpose of this workshop uh, hits, really hits home and resonates with me. So in a way, you can interpret my being part of the 1990 Institute and all its activities as an act of personal redemption to make up for the sins I committed in high school. So I'm really happy to be here and to reinforce uh, the kinds of activities I think that the uh, 1990 Institute uh, has, has been promoting for a number of years. And now I need to, at the very outset, um, make a disclaimer because that slide should go up there now. If I can have the next slide. This is a disclaimer that we have to make because of a lot of conflicting points of view about what China is or isn't, what America is or isn't in relationship to China. So we need to really say very emphatically that we are a non-profit organization, but we are non-political and we are non-partisan. And this has been true since our founding in the wake of uh, Tiananmen Square. And um, we don't espouse a political ideology, any particular side. Our mission is to educate. And I, I know that Lucille uh, Lee was mentioned earlier. She, of all the people, there's, there's many actors in our organization, but she is the one who has been keeping the institu institute true to its mission, to make sure we are right there 
you know, um, trying to be objective. And she's worked with an extraordinary, extraordinary committee of people, Alice and, of course, all the others that, that are on the, um, on the committee. Um, so what's in your bag? Uh, we have had uh, to devise some things there uh, for you. Those of you who are new, you got a book. Uh, that's Wasserman's book, um, Jeffrey Wasserman. Wasserstrom, excuse me, was our speaker last year. So you have that. There may be some who didn't get it because we're still waiting for an additional uh, shipment. Also, you have a notebook that's in there for you to make notes, to keep notes uh, for the day. Uh, you have, of course, your program, uh, which uh, the committee worked very hard to make sure there were no typos. So if you catch anything, let us know. 